Hello, Facebook. Hello, everybody. It is the 26th. It is Saturday, December 26th. Hope everybody had an amazing Christmas, whether you celebrate or not, or whatever you celebrate. Hope you had a fantastic day. Uh, we always have a good day here at Aroma Time on Christmas Day. It is um, our annual soup kitchen. Uh, we give away uh, free meals every year, no questions asked meals. Uh, this year was a little different than previous. Uh, because of COVID, we had to severely limit our volunteers and severely limit, just severely limit all the activity in here. If you've been here in the past, you know that some days there's 30, 30 people in the restaurant volunteering. Um, so we had to severely, severely eliminate a lot of volunteers to keep everybody safe. Uh, curbside pickup for the drivers, drivers didn't even come in. So we modified things around and it worked out very well. So good morning to everybody tuning in. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Barbara. Hello, Carlos and everybody else. Carlos is in Warm, Florida. Just drop a comment, everybody. Hashtag live if you're tuning in live or where you're tuning in from. Um, our Christmas Day had some, some unexpected twists that I wanted to tell you a story about yesterday. Um, you know, anything can happen in the restaurant industry. Anything can happen, and it normally does. And some of the stories that um, that happened to us, people are like, oh my gosh, like you need to write a book on this kind of stuff. So a little quick story about yesterday, I'll tell. Uh, a couple new things that I want to talk about before I jump into our story. Um, the um, next wine dinner is this Monday. Uh, since we've been running around crazy with the soup kitchen and our new Airbnb that has guests in it finally, new guests arrived yesterday, uh, which is part of our hectic story. Um, so... The wine dinner is on Monday. We've not had time to promote it. We will be doing a wine dinner on Monday. Stay tuned for an email. Stay tuned for a Facebook post posting. It is winter wines. Winter reds, Jamie? Winter reds, Winter yeah. reds. Winter reds and a dish. Four wines and a dish. $25. It is a bargain. Um, we've been doing that since June every other Monday, and it's been a huge, huge success. We sell out of these events. We only have seven tables inside, so... Um, um, you need to uh, make a reservation for that. They're casual, and you can order off of the regular menu. Yep, That's casual. Right. You can order off the regular menu, and you can take wine home. You can take a lot of wine home if you want. So we're allowed to sell wine. Since COVID happened, uh, the governor um, has relaxed our liquor license, and we're allowed to do off-premise sales now. So you can buy wine to go. You can buy a bottle of alcohol to go. Or you can buy tequila, gin and tonics, pre-made drinks, all this stuff. So that's really cool. So our wine dinners are designed so you can bring home bottles and a dish. Four wines and a dish, $25. That's Monday. Um, let's see. New on our, brand new on our list, on our grocery list. This is super exciting. This is really super exciting. I love salmon. I'm a, I love salmon, but I only eat wild salmon. I will not touch the farm-raised stuff at all. I've not touched farm-raised salmon since the 90s. I've not put that in my body since the 90s. I've not served it here at my restaurant ever. Um, that's how dedicated we are about farmed versus wild salmon. So of course, um, I love smoked salmon, you know, like the lox, the smoked salmon for bagels. I love that, but I never eat it because 98% of the stuff out there on the market, 99% of the stuff out there on the market is indeed farm-raised salmon. Well, I said, now that we have H&H &H bagels in stock, H&H um, &H bagels, the, ba the bakery from New York City, we stock their bagels now. They come frozen right from H&H. &H. They freeze them there. Uh, they come in six packs. We've been selling a lot of these bagels. By the way, we're sold out of pizzas until Tuesday. Our, um, our uh, uh, Italian pizzas from Naples are sold out. We've sold a ton of them in the last couple of days. But back to the bagels. We brought the bagels in. We brought organic cream cheese in. We brought Follow Your Heart vegan cream cheese in. And I said, what would make the bagels complete? Would be salmon, smoked wild salmon. So I called Alaska Gold, our supplier, and I said, Kendall, do you have, I figured if he, if he doesn't have it, he'll know who has it. Kendall, do you have smoked salmon? He goes, we have smoked salmon. But it was the wrong smoked salmon. It's hot smoked salmon, which means they're, they're in cubes and uh, they're hot smoked at a hot temperature as opposed to cold smoked and we can slice them nice and thin and put them on a bagel. So I quickly discovered that was the wrong. He goes, okay, Marcus, Acme Smokehouse in New York buys a ton of coho salmon from us. They buy an extensive amount of coho salmon from us and they're smoking it. Call Joel over there and, um, and speak to him. He's a sales manager and he'll set you up. So that's how it happened. I called, got set up. Um, I think I told the story about how he pushed me off on farm race versions until he, told, until he sold me the goods. So we now have, we now have 12 ounce packages and three ounce packages of wild smoked Salmon, 
coho salmon from Alaska, line caught, not net caught. Line caught coho salmon. Um, this is it right here. I'm going to try some in a few minutes here. I went for my run already uh, with some friends and doing some work and emails getting ready to go out, which I think Jamie might've just sent it. Um, so if you're on our email list, the email's going out now. So this is $34.99 for 12 ounces. The four, three ounce one is $9.99. Same price as if you went into like a grocery store and bought it. There's a grocery store prices. We're not taking advantage of, of anybody with prices like that. It's, everything's priced very competitively on our, on our grocery list. So that is new. Um, anything else, Jamie? Um, we got garbanzo beans. Oh, yeah, we got new garbanzo beans on our cashews, list. Pumpkin, pumpkin seeds, seeds, organic pumpkin cashews. Um, we have to update the list. There's so many new items coming in. We got Ronnie Brook pints of ice cream, chocolate cashew and vanilla, Jamie? Chocolate hazelnut, that's on our list. Well, we'll be on our list. We just have to price it and put it on our list. We got a lot of new things in the last couple of days and we've been super, super busy. Um, so lobster mac and cheese is still $9.99. Still $9.99, it runs till tomorrow. We sold like 30 of these on Monday. Um, we sold a bunch on Thursday. So we're expecting to sell a lot. At the point we're going, we might actually run out. Um, I bought a lot of lobster meat for these and we're to, I sold way better than I thought it would have. So stay tuned for next week's $9.99. We'll announce that on Sunday or Monday. Um, got a couple of options for that. Um, it's probably gonna be a pulled pork sandwich, uh, smoked pulled pork. Talk about New Year's as well? New Year's, yeah. New Year's Eve, we're not sure what we're doing because uh, we're not probably not gonna be allowed open until after 10 and the governor might say at any point that we're not, not gonna be allowed out. So um, that might, who knows? We, we're definitely planning on a five o'clock seating and a seven o'clock seating for New Year's Eve. Nothing fancy, casual. You order off the menu, you order what you want. If you need us to cater your New Year's Eve, we can cater your New Year's Eve. We can set you up with food, we can deliver and do all those things. We can get your wine selections. If you're having a small get together at your house and you need a bartender, we can probably set you up with a bartender. So um, things like that we can totally do. Um, we have one request right now for a bartender uh, to go to a location, so small location, small gathering. So if you have a small gathering and you want somebody, um, one of our staff members, we can do that. It's a fixed fee. It's uh, how many hours? Four or five hours, Jamie? Five hours? I forgot. What, five. Yeah, you got you got to you got to message Jamie on that so we can definitely have somebody there go clean up, make cocktails for you, reheat food, things like that. That's very easy to, easy to do. Next is um, story time. You know, anything can happen. I just gotta get a drink really quick here. Um, sip on some of Jamie's tea. I like that story time. Story time, yeah, story time. I do that every week. Anything can happen in the restaurant industry, and oh boy, does it. In this industry, restaurant industry, hotel industry. If you've ever worked in this industry, you know, you know, if, if, it, if it's bound to happen, it's going to happen. So, Christmas Day, we do our soup kitchen. We pump out a lot of food out of here, like 500 meals a year go out of here on Christmas Day, no charge, community service that we do. We've been extremely lucky that only one year we've had snow out of, this is our 18th year, only one year out of 18 years that we had snow where it was hard to deliver, we still got the deliveries out. I think but this was the first year it rained. This year it rained. Now, we had high winds. I woke up at 3 a.m. on Christmas Day and I said, you know what, there's no power. There is no electricity in the building. I was like, oh my gosh. Christmas day, we're doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of meals. Like we might be able to do something without electricity, but at some point we need electricity to make this happen, right? So Jamie gets in the kitchen, what, five o'clock? Five o'clock. Jamie went to the kitchen at five o'clock and turned on the one oven, which is a non-convection oven, which means the oh. gas will come on and it'll go. The other convection oven, the other oven is a convection oven. It won't light because there's no convection, there's no electric. So one out of two ovens works and it's a slower oven. But good thing we don't have two convection ovens because then we'd be in a lot of trouble. I'd have to light the smoker up and cook in the smoker outside. So she got here five in the morning in the kitchen, started, started doing her thing. I had to go to the Airbnb, the brand new Airbnb, which the day before our guests canceled. We had guests coming for the whole week. They were checking in tomorrow. Um, which gave us a couple extra days to go do, do a few miscellaneous things. Like I still have to go to one of the stores today and buy some more pillows for the kids room. I, there's a couple of things I have to do still. Um, I have not tested, I have not dry run on the theater yet. The theater was just complete 16 person theater in the basement. Um, we did not do a dry run on that. We wanted to and make sure that it works everything. And, didn't, and that so that was our, that was our plan. But our guests canceled. 
Um, they paid Airbnb already or Verbo. They paid. We have all their money. We have fourteen thousand dollars of theirs. Um, they canceled for COVID reasons. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to penalize you. Um, I can keep your money 100, percent but I'm not going to penalize you. Uh, let's let's see if we can work with you and move dates to another week. And they were happy with that, so they picked another week, and we immediately moved them dates to another week, so they can still come to the house and they wouldn't be out any money. But now I'm in overdrive mode because now I have to get this thing relisted for the busiest week of the year that we've been trying to get this thing ready for. I mean, our labor last week in there was insane because all the workforce in there getting everything done. So I was like, I have to rent this house out. I totally got to rent this house out. So I throw it back up on Airbnb and Verbo. Um, I start getting hits like crazy, but everybody's like nickel and diming you. They want a deal. They want a deal. They want a deal. They want this deal. They want, they want to pay us half of what it's worth or half of what we're asking. Um, there were some more legitimate offers that came in. A lot of offers came in and one offer comes in right away for Christmas day, which is the following day. And I'm like, wow, here's a two day, two day stay. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's reduced. I'll take it. Let's just get let's just get this group of people in there. They're only in for two days. We can get the house cleaned, turned over properly, sanitized for the next group. So it's New Year's Eve and it's perfectly fine. By Wednesday, we'll have a whole new group in. That's what my mind is thinking. Um, so that's what we did. So a group of guys checked in yesterday. Well, I go to the Airbnb in the morning at 7 a.m. to do a couple miscellaneous things that I know I won't have time to do later because I'll be in my soup kitchen cooking. Got that done, got back to the restaurant about 8, 8.30. Um, and I said, okay, at one o'clock, I'm gonna go back to the Airbnb. I have to make sure the PlayStation is ready to go and I'm gonna do the theater again. I'm gonna go through the theater, just do so sound checks on everything in the theater. And I'll take a friend of mine up there who knows all about electronics, this is perfect. I go back up at one o'clock and there's no electricity. They lose electricity between 7 a.m. and one o'clock. And I'm like, you've gotta be kidding me. I said, oh wait, we got, we got a generator. I have a backup generator. Wait, why isn't the generator on? Why isn't the generator working? So now the generator's not working. There's no electric. It is one o'clock. We have guests checking in at four o'clock. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do? So I call um, a furnace guy, local guy, Jim Hornbeck. I call him and say, Jim, I'm in a major, major bind. Jim did all the work at the house, so he knows the house. I said, Jim, I'm in a major, major, major bind. I have guests coming. He was just there, he's been there for a while doing work. I said, I have guests coming today. They're checking in at four o'clock. The generator's not working. He goes, okay, I'll be up there in 15 minutes, Marcus. I said, thank goodness. For some reason that morning, when I was clean, going through doing a final clean in the house, one of the employees last week, one of the construction guys left their jacket on, one, on the front door, by the front door. So I took the jacket and I put it into the, the, the separate room garage, separate garage suburb building. And as I'm putting it in the garage, for some reason, I just started looking through shelves in there and stuff because we haven't gone through all of that stuff in, in there that well. And I find a key. I find a key and I'm like, huh, I wonder what this key is too. It's probably for the garage. So I try in the garage. I said, this key doesn't work for the garage. Who knows what this key is for? I put it back in the shelf. So Jim calls me and Jim's there and he goes, Marcus, I need the key for the generator. And I said, you've got to be kidding me, Jim. The key needs a the generator needs a key. He goes like, yeah, you can't get in this without a key. I'm like, I have no idea where the key is to the generator. Like, that's the last, like, I barely have the key to the front door. Like, this is how crazy it's been. I said, you know what, Jim? Go into the garage, make a left, eye level, third shelf. There's a key sitting there, a miscellaneous key sitting there that I just happened to randomly find this morning by luck, just by, by total chance. He goes, picks up the keys on his cell phone. and goes, Marcus, this is the key. I said, thank goodness. Somebody's on my side right now. Somebody's on my side. So he starts diving into the generator. I leave, I go back to get my friend, um, my friend Jeremy, who knows all about electronics, thinking, okay, by the time I get back, Jim's gonna have this, the generator all going and everything, you know, it's a relay, so whatever. He's gonna have it all going, we're gonna be able to go through this. To <laughs> it's gonna be easy. I get back up there at 2.30, Jim's like, this thing's not starting. He's like, there's a short somewhere and I can't figure it out. This thing's not, there's a chance that you're not going to have this thing working. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, Jim. So I call my friend who lives on the same road. Before he even says hello, he says to me, power will be back on at 4.30. I said, thank you very much. That's the question I was asking. Merry Christmas. He goes, you're welcome, Marcus. 4.30 will be back on. So I said to Jim, I said, Jim, well, the only best news we have right now is Central Hudson Roller Store is by 4.30. 
And Jim goes, well, I think you might have bigger problems, Marcus. I think that there's some kind of shorten in the house somewhere, somewhere. And if power comes back on, there's a chance that you might not be able to have power at all. There's probably something seriously wrong with this. I'm like, oh my gosh. So now I'm like, it's three o'clock now. I have guests checking in at four o'clock. There's no power. Jamie's inside the house trying to sweep and do whatever she can just, without, just to clean. Without electric. Because the, the cleaning staff didn't do the laundry room the other day because we were still doing so much laundry oh, and we had to move. I was so worried about the vacuum. I wouldn't even be able to use it anyway. Yeah, she was worried about the vacuum. You couldn't use the vacuum anyway. So she's inside cleaning. Our friend Jeremy and Adele are there and we're waiting. I'm like, oh my gosh, like there's, I can't show Jeremy the, 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 the theater now and we can't do a drive right now because there's no electric. Jim's like, Marcus, I, I don't really have that good of news for you right now. I said, I, I, we're not, we're not going to know until power gets restored here. Now it's 3.30. The guests pull up. They're early. I'm, I, I typically don't get upset when there's no electric because it's beyond my control. So here at the restaurant, we lose electric. But it's like, oh, well, you know, I'm like, and there's been times during the summertime where it's thunder and lightning and we'll have like a busy Saturday night coming at two o'clock, three o'clock powers out. And people are like, aren't you worried? I'm like, no, it'll work out. Like, power's gonna come back, this or that. And it's always worked out perfectly fine. It's always worked out perfectly fine. I called the maintenance guy. Um, and uh, and I was almost crying to him. I was like, you have no idea what I'm going through right now. Like, I'm screwed. Like, guests, guests are pulling into the driveway. We don't think we can fix the generator. There's no electric. Like, the house just barely got, you know, we just, Jamie was in there trying to finish up the last couple of things. I haven't done a driveway, and I'm like, I was almost in tears. And he says to me, he goes, it'll work out. <laughs> it'll work out. So the guests, I was like, oh, you're early. And they're like, yeah, we're early. Um, is Walmart, where's Walmart? I knew Walmart was closed. So I said, oh, Walmart's down the road in Napanock, just to send them off on the, on the car ride. I said, yeah, knowing they're closed, I figured let them go drive to Walmart, figure out their clothes and drive back. That'll give me 20 more minutes. I'm like, if I had 20 more minutes, right? It's gonna be 20 more minutes. So that's what the guests did. They they left and they drove, went to Walmart, came back, and they came back at, at 3.50. Check-ins at four o'clock, they came at 3.50, then the second car comes. And I explained to them, you know, here's what's going on, guys. We lost power. Central Hudson's gonna have power back on here in like literally 20 minutes. We're doing some work on the on the generator. Uh, I have my maintenance guy here doing some work on the generator. Um, you know, let's start the tour of the house. So I have my headlamp on. And everybody's got their phones and, and, you know, picking their bedrooms out, going through the theater and all this kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, the power comes on at 4.08. Power comes on at 4.08. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing, right? So, of course, not all the power's on because Jim was in there bra and their breakers and doing things. And he's not on premise because he's worrying about another emergency he has right now. So he's going back and forth between two houses. And I call him and say, the power's on, but not all of it. He goes, oh, boy. He goes, I'm, that's probably an easy fix, but oh boy. <laughs> I said, the well's not working either because it's electric. And he goes, oh boy, let me make sure. I'm up. He goes, I'll be up there soon. So he got back up another half an hour and made, restored everything to, to full power. And um, by the time it got dark. So then, then the guys look at me and saying, where can we go to eat dinner tonight? I'm like, it's Ellenville, it's Christmas day. There's probably not much open right now, if anything, and Souk House is open, so I recommend it Souk House. And then like, we just want some pizzas or something. So I was like, you know what, guys? I got you covered. I got you covered. I'll go back down to my restaurant. I'll make some pizzas for you, and I'll bring them back. Here's what you can order. Here's the prices, this and that, and I'll get you guys some pizzas here in a bit. And that's exactly what, uh, what happened. And so um, they were loving the house. They were absolutely loving the house once they could see what was in the house. And um, we just made it... Um, it was a very, very stressful day leading up to fire. Just so we lit them a fire and everything. We lit them a fire. I was going to, I was going to have like bourbon, hard bourbon spiced, uh, rum, uh, uh, uh rum spiced bourbon, no, apple cider with rum in it. I was like, Jamie, just apple cider with bourbon, apple cider with maple, bourbon, bourbon. bourbon. maple bourbon. I was like, Jamie, just go to the restaurant, go get a gallon of apple cider. We'll spice it up, put a bottle of bourbon in there. Let's just make a welcome reception for these people like the, to stall them. Um, to install them and, you know, get the fire going for them, get everything going for them. And that's what we did. And when they got there, we found out they don't drink. None, none, of, them, none of them drink. So it was a good thing we didn't do the, the cider. We didn't even have apple cider in stock anyway to do it. So, but everything turned out fine. But man, oh man, what a stressful day. And then on top of it, we had the soup kitchen. Um, some of the volunteers that were coming in to work the kitchen 
One couldn't get here because his road was flooded, and the other one didn't show up, didn't hear from them. So the only other, the two people that had cooking in the kitchen didn't show up yesterday. So Jamie cooked all day in the kitchen for the soup kitchen while I was running around with the Airbnb trying to get things figured out and situated. So it was some day yesterday, and at the end of the day, I looked at Jamie and I said, you know what, it could have been a lot worse today. Could have been a lot worse. And we went to Jamie's parents' house with, uh, with our kids, and we watched uh, the movie Snowball Express. I don't know if anybody's ever seen Snowball Express. If you've ever seen Snowball Express, drop a comment in yes. It's a Disney movie from the 70s. Um, it's where the guy finds out he goes to work and he finds out the, there's an attorney there waiting for him and he thinks it's for a, a debt collection. And he finds out that he inherits a uh, hotel in Silver Hill, Colorado from his great, great, great uncle. Um, and he quits his job right then and there, goes home, tells the family in New York City we're moving, and they drive out their, their station wagon to Silver Hill, Colorado, and, and Uncle Jake's um, Grand Imperial Hotel was actually just a closed, defunct, rundown hotel that nobody even knew about in town there, and they had to uh, start this whole new life. It's Snowball Express, they built a ski resort there. Um, one of my favorite movies since I was a kid. Um, I loved watching that movie. We we'll watch it every year, and we just happen to have the DVD. Uh, so uh, we got to watch that last night Can you as a tradition. Say, talk about New Year's again. New Year's again, sure. New Year's again. So we're definitely sitting at five o'clock. We're definitely sitting at seven o'clock, unless Governor Cuomo says nobody's allowed out, because that could be possible. Because in Pennsylvania. Um, on the day before Thanksgiving, their governor said nobody out after five o'clock because it's a big bar night. So I'm not sure what's, anything could happen at any point here. But we are planning a five o'clock. We are planning a seven o'clock. If we're not allowed something in between, yep. I can work with them. I just, um, we only have seven tables. We only have seven tables. So we have to be efficient. We're not allowed to have you in the doors after 10 o'clock. That's the new rule that went down about a month ago. Cuomo issued that. After 10 o'clock at night, restaurants cannot have occupants inside. Um, we can, the staff can be here. We can be cleaning up. But as a guest, you're not allowed to be in the doors of any restaurant after 10 o'clock. So that puts a bummer on New Year's Eve, on watching the ball drop and anything. So, of course, we don't have a DJ this year. We don't have dancing this year like, like we normally do. And who knows if we're ever going to go back to something like that. Who knows? Um, I hope we do. So... Um, we can also cater at your house. If you need food, we'll deliver food. Um, if you need a staff member to bartend, to cook, things like that, we can do that as well. Our staff is looking for hours. Our staff is looking for hours. We don't have as many hours as we want. The reason why we're doing the 9.99 specials every week is to drum up a lot of business. So we're asking that you use no um, coupons or discounts with those 9.99s because then it's like me handing you money and walking in the door. If everybody walks in the door, if I hand them money, we're not going to stay in business. I'm trying to create business and keep my staff staff busy. So um, as well as, that being said as well as, if you do get takeout from any restaurant, make sure you leave a tip. You don't have to leave the 20%. If you leave 10%, the staff is fine. If you leave a dollar, $2, the staff is better with a dollar or $2 than you leaving nothing. Because every time you do a takeout order at any restaurant, that staff member has to stop, answer the phone, they have to pack up your bags. It takes them away from the little bit of tables that they do have in the dining room and giving them good service. They have to now create, most restaurants have to, they, it's not just one person just doing takeouts. A lot of restaurants, it's, it's everybody's dual purpose. So I know for us, if you're do, we're doing a lot of takeouts, our guests in house here, um, get pulled. Our, our our staff gets pulled away from our in-house guests. So just remember, they're all they're only getting seven eighty five an hour. They don't get full minimum wage because it's a tipped um, it's a tip credit. Um, some states still do two dollars an hour. New York State does seven eighty five an hour, and that's what they get paid. So um, if they don't meet the minimum wage, and Jamie and I have to subsidize their money. So if you have, and this happens a lot of times. Um, we've come across a lot of friends that say, well, my son works at this restaurant and he barely makes minimum wage after everything's said and done. Um, if that's happening, if you have kids that are working in a restaurant or family members are working in a restaurant and they're not at least making minimum wage in their wait staff, the restaurant owner has to subsidize them to make, um, to make minimum wage. The restaurant owner has to subsidize them. So if you're getting a lot of takeouts, especially from us and not, not leaving a gratuity, then Jamie and I have to, on top of it, subsidize them. Typically, we've never had to do that because we've never been in this situation before and things just happen to work out. But if that did happen, 
Jamie and I are responsible for the difference, the gap difference. So Daniel's saying that it isn't the new normal. Um, it's not the new normal. Um, I don't like using that, the new normal at all. So it's not the new normal. We all have to stay very positive and move forward and keep going and stay healthy, take lots of vitamin C, vitamin D, keep exercising, um, eating good food, um, and, um, and just making some good decisions. And um, if you are pro-mask, you make, need to make sure your mask is sanitized properly, uh, getting thrown away often. You don't want to inhale the fibers. Inhaling the fibers from a cloth, ma cloth mask um, will do damage. They'll get into your lungs. These particles may never, ever get out. So cloth masks, that, especially the ones that you wash, will have detrimental long-term effects to your lungs. So make sure that it's one mask and done. Throw away your mask, throw away your mask. If you're using the mask throughout several hours a day, maybe pray it right down with colloidal silver, hydrogen peroxide. There is good science on masks, but there is no, there's no, there's no like course out there or the media is not telling you how to properly use the mask. Uh, I've never heard Cuomo say, you know, how to properly use a mask. So a lot of people are using masks ineffectively and in, and in turn causing more damage. So, um, and again, there is a lot of science that masks work, a lot of science that masks don't work, but if you are using a mask, especially for a long time, make sure that you're following good guidelines of that mask, um, mask use. So that's super, super, super important. Um, one and done a lot of times with masks. So, um, and um, that's it everybody. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, I have to, uh, well today's sort of a relaxed day. Now that the Airbnb has people in it, and now that Christmas day is over, we're not, it's not, yeah, we're not, it's not, we're bored. We have a little bit of work to do. <laughs> It's not that we're bored. It's definitely nice not to be running around. I literally, every day when I've been running, I've only been getting a mile in. That's when you know that I have a super busy day when I only get a mile in. I got three miles in this morning. It was 16 degrees this morning. We went out for a run with my friend. And um, we were, I'm like, Rob, three miles today is all. I haven't done, I haven't done more than a mile all week. Um, last Sunday, I got three miles in. And then um, all week, I've just been like a mile here, a mile there because I just don't have the, uh, the time to dedicate. So I was like, Rob, it's 16 degrees. I'm just not in the mood to run six miles or be out there for an hour. It's like three miles. He's like, I agree with you, Marcus. Three miles and we're done. So that was it this morning. Um, let's see. So thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thank you for your support. Uh, thanks, Barbara. Um, hi, Myrna, Linda. Uh, thanks everybody. Hey, Anthony, how's it going? Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Really, really appreciate it, Denny. Um, everybody, we appreciate your support. Really, really appreciate your support over the years. Or if you just found us, we appreciate your support. We appreciate your support. Um, we're happy to be here and working and and uh, providing good food. And um, all right, folks, everybody have an amazing day. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.